Well, mostly. We used to eat fish and chips with a lot of uh, vinegar, salt, and black pepper on. I still remember, even although I was living in Oldham, but we still used to go to Longside. There used to be a shop who used to sell all these spices. So you can imagine going on the buses to Ashton, from Ashton to Longside to get the uh, spices and uh, chapati flour. There was no halal meat or whatever. But then what happened? A fellow named Amin, uh, he was Punjabi. He used to be known Amin Murghiyanwala. Murghi means hands. Uh, he got a van and he used to go house to house to Pakistanis if they wanted a hen. He used to kill and give you the hen there. And they could have halal. And then slowly and steadily, samosa shops and things like that started coming, which now you can see that those little shops have become into a very, very big restaurants. Uh, we appreciate actually the life of what we got here. We worked hard and uh, it paid us off. And I don't think we would have got it even now if we had stayed in Pakistan. It wasn't for me to decide that was my father's decision. And uh, I think it was a very good decision at those days. This country has given us what our countries couldn't give. And our countries even now cannot give us. I go to Pakistan very often and I like to do things what can help my community. But here uh, it's not much needed what, when we compare, it's like ABA, we had the funds and we thought what to do with it and we put it towards good causes. We have uh, contributed into different things what needed in our hometown that, that is Oldham. I think, uh, uh, I think ABA helped a lot of people to start their own business. A lot of businesses were starting in front of us and they are doing very well. When I went to uh, school at the time, I didn't understand English, not a single word. In North Charlton, I was the only Bangladeshi. Sorry, there was one Bangladeshi lad, my cousin, but he was in a different compound. So education authority, I think at that time, what they realized was that it wasn't only me, there were other Asian people moving into these schools and they were all struggling with their languages. So what they did at Broadway building, they set up a English as a learning course for Asian people. And there were people joining us at Broadway building North Charlton, South Charlton, and few other school, and we're a group of about five, six people from Bangladeshi origin, uh, Pakistani origin, and uh, African origin. So we had a dedicated teacher there every morning to learn the basics, alphabet, and basic words. And after a year, uh, slowly picked up the language, and it was really good help having that uh, class. At the beginning, I didn't know what was happening, and one time. There was somebody, I mean, I, when I started learning a bit, somebody said something about me. And the teacher just said, leave him alone, he's on his own, don't pick on him. And I can vividly <laughs> remember that. And from then on, I mean, I had never had any trouble with this school. We said uh, all over the, we should get together and we should do something uh, for betterment uh, for the societies and the multicultural societies. Everybody give uh, their uh, opinion and the support. We earn the monies, we employ the people, we pay the tax, uh, and uh, Asian people, Asian business is get, get a big help in the you know council uh, to support their economics. The school I went to was Glodic Infants. That was uh, I was in the final year there as well, and um, felt very comfortable because the teachers were really nice to us compared to my teachers in Pakistan, where they used to whip you proper with a stick. <laughs> so that was an advantage. 
I remember uh, things like we used to get a carton of milk in the mornings, which was totally, you know, I still remember them, you know, at break time. Um, and you get loads of toys to play with. After my mother arrived, she also started working at our cake bakeries for the first four or five years. And so both parents were constantly working and I was left to look after my young, younger brother. Growing up, I was always, always felt I was always working. As time has progressed, a lot of Asian businesses have, are firmly established and uh, even the chamber who originally set us up has disappeared more or less. We all felt that there wasn't a further need for our services and I think things are progressing fine without us. Manufacturing business was quite high in, in Manchester and uh, a newcomer in this country can get easily job in knitting factory, in manufacturing fashion industry. When I go in Manchester Piccadilly and Ancourt and I used to go there to do their books and usually they ask me, we need some worker, could you give us some worker from Oldham? If somebody come now from abroad, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, to settle in this country, yes, it is quite hard for him. He can't buy the house, and even he can't pay the rent. We started doing poultry uh, from slaughtering at different places, different farms, and picking birds up, then slaughtering our own initially at local farms, and then distribute them to different shops as well then. It wasn't just for our own shop. Then we started distributing the shops. The circle of supplies became larger and larger. We even supplied into Bradford as well. Manchester had a few shops. 1973 is the point that I would say that I mean poultry uh, was born in the true sense. It was a name that was synonymous, certainly in the northwest, the north, and maybe, maybe, and I would not saying it lightly, maybe in whole of Britain, we were that well known in terms of we were known as king of poultry. The intention was when they came here, including ours, was to go back. <laughs> you know, uh, I think get the education earn money and go back. But it, it never happened, you know. There were uh, some people who actually did go back, but they decided they couldn't settle there because they had um, the uh, culture shock as well because it's a different culture over there and they've been living here for so many years and they couldn't really fit into that environment over there. And also their friend circle was here, over here and not over there. So uh, they came back again. Mom didn't really like here because um, she couldn't speak English. When we went to school, Dad went to work. Um, she was on her own, really. And she, the weather never suited her. She was always saying, let's go back, let's go back. <laughs> uh, soon after my dad died, um, she decided to go back to India. Uh, so she stayed there for some time until... I got married and uh, when we were expecting our first baby, that's when she decided to come back. She would go back and forth, you know, she would stay uh, some time in India and come back against it. I was keep looking for different premises where to start business because I've done that business startup course and uh, so I went, I saw that house and I thought I just only live two minutes away from here. So I thought, let me go. And I, so I put the note through the door. I said, your house is empty. If you don't mind, if you're interested in renting out, please ring me. And they live only down the road as well. So Dick, his wife uh, came around and she goes, yeah, uh, uh, let's have a chat. It was a diversity group. They heard from about me and then they asked whether I'd take part in um, a selection of role models for Britain. It was to help inspire and motivate youth towards new career pathways and to eliminate stereotypical images. And I said yes. 
um, 100 was selected and then uh, one was selected for a very big two-page article in the Diversity magazine and uh, that was me. A DVD was made where the DVD was then circulated around schools. It's a lot of weddings, uh, mendis, a lot of cultures that I've met. You know, you've got the Hindu culture, you've got um, Sikh culture, and then you've got Pakistani, Bengalis, um, white, and the, the traditional stuff that they, they do and they go through in weddings. It's amazing. I mean, I, I've learned a lot. The trends have changed. I mean, in our calf, we work on a split 50-50, Asian and non-Asian. If you look back, there was a lot of Asian ladies who didn't work and they were housewives, just like my mother. Now, the trends have changed and young girls are working or the chaps are working and they both haven't got enough time to cook during the day or in the evening. And maybe they want to come out for the meal, maybe by choice. And a lot of young people now, they just want to go, they, they love going out and socialising with friends. And I think it's a good thing because, I mean, they're mingling with people all the time and it's good to share thoughts when you come out and it helps businesses, it helps people in many areas. The timing is right for the business to grow more rapidly than it has done in the past and, and, and we've seen that happen. And so what I'd like to say in 10 years time is either this business has crossed certain thresholds in terms of its revenue and the number of staff that I have and I don't, I'm not working in the business full time, I have like a, a chairman type role. There was a two large communities, which was the Pakistani and the Bangladeshis. Uh, Indian community, yeah, it's a small amount, and, and there was a small number of businesses. But in and then also quickly learned at the early stages there were various camps, if you like, uh, you know, within the communities. I think that one of the distinct advantages I had because I was an outsider and I could keep an impartial viewpoint. Most of the early businesses I came across was um, largely retail grocery, convenience sort of, sort of type of sort of setup. And then I started getting a bit of a variety that was uh, one of the uh, ones that sort of still going, uh, was Asian sweets and savory manufacturer. Uh, young chap had moved over from uh, Bradford. He had some family connections there and it done it's sort of research that they want an Asian sweet and savoury, uh, you know, uh, provision in Oldham. And he started from a, so, a small shop in Compass. And to this day, and to his credit, he's, he's done really well. Uh, he's got a thriving business. In fact, he opened three sort of shops. He settled his younger brothers. Uh, so they, from one, it's become sort of really three shops. Um, but he's, he's got one on Lee's Road now, much bigger premises. That's still going. I think, with all fairness, a large number of businesses that I helped to sort of start, they are still surviving. Uh, then the other sort of the second batch was then a uh, lot of sort of takeaways, restaurant sort of type, primarily takeaways. Although I was actually working as, in a professional job and not running our business in my own right, because of my experience and background, I suddenly became an honorary member of the Asian Business Association from day one. So from its inception, right right to this present day, I've always been there um, in the background, helping, helping them out and trying to guide them. Because if you, if you can imagine in 1992, uh, when I started, there weren't that many... Um, Pakistanis or Bangladeshis in professional roles in Oldham. So what happened to me was that um, I got picked up by different organisations like the Oldham College, um, the council, uh, and I began, began to go on boards. The first lot of Asian businesses, it was things like, you know, your self-employed taxis, your takeaways and your restaurants, and to an extent, some of the clothes trade. But now, it's expanded into all sorts of services now, whether it be IT, estate agency, DIY, 
it has a massive impact on the town because they got quite an entrepreneurial spirit. It's driving the town forward. The ABA, it's been a good, good bunch of people that have tried to make a town better for the whole community, not just the Asian business community. King Cotton was actually based on low wages and without a really an opportunity for people to rise to a higher station. And it, it didn't have the creative opportunities which have now been taken advantage of by the younger generation. So there has been a, a profound change in Oldham and this has been consistent with the rise of the Asian community and they have, to a very large degree, have driven it. It's not something that's just happened and they've surfed the wave, they have created that momentum themselves. The, the children of the original settlers um, who came here from Bangladesh and Pakistan grew up in this country or came here when they were very young. And a number of those clearly had a natural business instincts. Um, they worked hard. They wanted to make a success of their lives. They had an instinct of what was needed, what would sell. They were prepared to invest their money in it. And some of them have been extraordinarily successful. And now they are, I would say, central to the industrial backbone of Oldham. Initially, the way that the bank was approached, particularly by members of the South Asian community, was different to the way that it was approached by others, in that the proposition itself would be less structured. There wouldn't be a business plan. There wouldn't be a cash flow forecast. It would be unsophisticated. I've got X amount of cash. I want to buy this business, please lend me the money. And it was simple as that. Back then, there was a lot more judgmental lending in the banks, in that at that stage, I had a personal approval authority and I could do it up to a certain level. Very, very successful. There was very few of the propositions that went wrong. It seemed to go down very well from right from the start. Yeah, it seems as though it was, it was, uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm for it from all sectors. It wasn't all Bangladesh, Pakistani, Indian, or what, it was uh, all sectors involved. And uh, there was really enth you know, good enthusiasm for it. So it was, it, was, uh, it was a winner from our point of view. The ABA for me was a way of engaging with a group of people, a group of businesses that were not involved um, if they could have been involved with everything and not needing a separate group, then fine, but that was not the case. It was the route to achieve full integration. And, uh, and if that's happened now, then I think that's what I would have always wished for the outcome to be. We covered Asian businesses, we covered West Indian businesses. We covered Chinese businesses, we covered Ukrainian businesses. Don't forget, all of them had a Ukrainian community. The Polish and Ukrainian community goes back many years, precedes, precedes the West Indians and precedes the uh, South Asian you know, immigration. I've not yet met an Asian businessman who's not absolutely, utterly devoted, seriously ambitious, and thinks, you know, and, and the driven people. Because uh, none of this, if they have to work a bit longer, then it's fine, you know. And they think about business, 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 business. And they are, and it's, it's, it's an ethos. And I think it's come from the parents. Like a lot of the parents came over. And they weren't working in the mill, they'd work a corner shop. And they'd work every hour that God sent. Or they'd, make, they'd work in the garment industry. And they'd work every hour that, that God sent. Mm -hmm.